Nowadays, we click the skip app button faster than we swipe no on someone. But back in the 60s, an illustrator named Andrew Wahala from a poor neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, rose to international fame by making advertising language the pop culture of his time. Shocking artwork from Campbell's soup cans, deaths, and car crashes to overexposed Polaroid pictures of genitals captured the attention of the whole world for generations. Here are his six lessons to survive as an artist and get more than just your 15 minutes. Andy Warhol, who started his career as a commercial artist, has always been very talented from an early age. He graduated from Carnegie Mellon University in commercial art and served as the art director for his student publication. He made his living in his early career by drawing shoes for Glamour magazine, and his distinctive shoe drawings with his signature blotted line techniques helped him jumpstart his career in the advertising industry early on. With his money-savvy business mindset, Warhol was so far from the bohemian struggling artists who are living paycheck to paycheck. He did not only become rich and famous after death, he was rich and famous before he made the concept of fame famous. In his book, The Philosophy of Andy Warhol, there was an idea that defines his career. Making money is art, and working is art, and good business is the best art. That is consumerism, a theme that echoes loud and clear in his body of work. I'm a commercial person. Why? Well, I've got a lot of miles to feed. Gotta bring down the bacon. And his work was instantly recognizable. Uniquely Andy Warhol, yet familiar to most of his audience. Whether you are an art critic of The New Yorker or someone who just came across Warhol Diaries on Netflix, you can appreciate his art immediately without any prior art education. When his soup can was first featured in Time magazine in 1962, he started a movement that was exciting and new to the public by putting classically American day-to-day -day objects onto the white gallery walls and selling them at a price a few hundred times more than what the actual objects were worth. At the American Supermarket Exhibition in 1964, his painting of a can of Campbell's soup cost $1,500, while each autograph can was sold alongside the painting for $6.50 each. In order to make room for his creative experimentation in art, he made art that is uniquely him and also accessible to the public at the same time, from Campbell's soup, dollar bills, bananas, pistols, and Coca-Cola bottles. Warhol had this to say about Coca-Cola. What's great about this country is that America started the tradition where the richest consumers buy essentially the same things as the poorest. You can be watching TV and see Coca-Cola and you know that the president drinks Coca-Cola, Liz Taylor drinks Coca-Cola, and just think you can drink Coca-Cola too. A Coke is a Coke and no amount of money can get you a better Coke than the one the bum on the corner is drinking. All the Cokes are the same and all the Cokes are good. Liz Taylor knows it, the president knows it, the bum knows it, and you know it. Wonderfully unique, yet incredibly familiar. Having lived through the AIDS epidemic in New York in the 80s and his boyfriend's multiple suicide attempt, Warhol was obsessed with the theme of deaths and disasters and the media frenzy around them. It is what makes death pop. He saw a tightrope artist fall and die in front of millions in the news, and saw how he dominated pop culture and the zeitgeist of the general public. He knew how to exploit the shock values in deaths and disasters like the news outlets do. Suicide, pop. Plane crash, pop. Race riot, pop. Car crash, pop. What is universally shocking could be a rich repository of inspirations for art. You may find the topics he explored tasteless, but pushing boundaries is almost an essential step to becoming a successful artist. Warhol is famous for his silk screen paintings of global superstars. We send it out to a staff place and they just enlarge it. Then I trace it on the canvas and then paint oh, it on the canvas. From Marilyn Monroe. 
Elvis, Marlon Brando, Muhammad Ali, Elizabeth Taylor, to Mao, his subjects were always famous and were frankly the products of mass consumption. We consumed them in movies, in music, and in political ideologies. And in turn, Warhol in his studio called The Factory. His studio was called The Factory, well named because Andy had a large staff of assistants. A place where he, his assistants, distinguished intellectuals, track queens, playwrights, Hollywood celebrities gather around to party and also make art. He and his assistants would work day and night to turn out these paintings which are highly replicable. Each step of the painting could be standardized to a point that everyone around him could take part in the repetitive process to achieve the same quality of work. One of Warhol's key achievements was his experimentation on forms. His modernist films were very challenging to the ordinary viewers. For example, Sleep is a film that consists of six hours of naked footage of Warhol's lover at the time, John Journal. He literally sleeps in his bed the entire time. Nine people attended the screening and two left within the first hour. Compared to the commercial films we consume, sleep does not give you the illusion of continuity. There isn't a three-act structure in the movie, there's no setup to understand the character and no climax to anticipate. Just a six-hour CCTV footage of his lover. His other films are just as radical as this. You look at the movie Kiss, which is just hundreds of people making out. It's really erotic and really cool. He had men doing it, which was unheard of at the time. Chelsea Girls, no instructions. The projectionist can turn the sound on either reel, whatever you think. Couch, one that parts of it are obscene. There's full sex in it. Blowjob is so brilliant still because it is a blowjob, but you don't see the sex. You just see the guy's face. That's one of the best movies ever. He made you look at things in a completely different way, but that's what art is, isn't it? Other than experimenting on form, the medium Warhol picked for his paintings was just as controversial. His so-called oxidation paintings are actually peace paintings. You can see from his painting of Jean-Michel Basquiat, a close friend and frequent collaborator of Warhol, and the art world prodigy in the 80s. Warhol would lay his canvases down on the floor, coat them with copper-based paint, and then direct his assistants or visitors to the factory to urinate on them while the paint was still wet. The acid from the urine would in turn oxidize the metal in the copper paint, creating an abstract, shimmering effect. It may be very intuitive for artists to use themselves for inspiration and very intuitive for the outsiders to criticize how self-indulging artists could be. But I'd argue that it is one of the best ways to make art. Even if the piece wasn't worth anything in the end, it still meant something to you. Even though Warhol was often portrayed as a quiet, robotic, asexual, money-minded human being by the media, and he had definitely exploited the media at the same time to increase his exposure and sell more artwork, such as appearing on SNL and sitcoms. A lot of his paintings were actually quite personal and deeply emotional. One example could be found in his religious paintings. As he saw his friends and boyfriends suffering and dying during the AIDS epidemic during the 80s, he created a series of paintings with references to the Last Supper and Virgin Mary that reflected on his own sexuality and his own Catholic faith. You can find out Warhol's relationships in his paintings from his silk screen paintings of Jet Johnson, the Paramount logos of the Paramount executive John Gould, to the Basquiat collaboration. You can see that he made art for a living and also made art for himself. You don't have to be a starving artist to succeed. You just need to be hungry enough to make something that people want and eventually something that you want. And in the end, you will be able to make something that everyone wants, something good. Thank you.